In this video, I want to talk about my personal experience with potassium deficiency, what it felt like, and the number one giveaway symptom that made it clear that I had low potassium levels. Okay, to start off, a potassium deficiency is very common, just like a magnesium deficiency. I will get to why this is later in the video. But first, let's discuss common symptoms that you might get when you're potassium deficient or close to it. The first signs of low potassium levels would be things like general weakness or fatigue. The problem is that these symptoms are very vague and they can be caused by a number of things, not just a potassium deficiency. More specific symptoms would be muscle twitching or heart palpitations. Once you know that something in your muscle is acting up and you also know that it's not due to an underlying serious illness, then you can be pretty sure that there's something wrong with your electrolyte levels. Either there's a deficiency or an imbalance between two or more electrolytes. I had all of these symptoms, but what was even more interesting was that every time I took a specific electrolyte supplement or a specific mineral, like a calcium supplement or a magnesium supplement, these symptoms would get worse. When I would take calcium, for example, my muscle twitches got worse, and when I took magnesium supplements, my heart palpitations got worse. So at that point, I knew for sure that something with my electrolytes was off. But there was one more symptom that definitively showed me that I was potassium deficient. It was extreme constipation. Now, this is not like normal constipation, where your food just takes longer to pass through your body. I'm talking about extreme constipation to the point where it feels like your entire GI tract is completely shutting down. It was like my intestine muscles completely blocked everything. And it also came from one day to the next almost and didn't go away with normal remedies like eating more fiber or taking stool softener. Even high doses of laxative magnesium products like milk of magnesia didn't help. It really only went away when I started supplementing potassium directly. The reason this happened is because potassium is critical for nerve signaling and muscle movement. When the body doesn't have enough potassium, the muscles needed to keep your digestive system going can contract and relax properly. Now, at this point, please understand that this doesn't mean all constipation is always caused by low potassium levels. There are many different reasons for constipation. But in my case, it was the giveaway symptom. And I later also got my electrolyte levels tested and this confirmed the deficiency. If you are also potassium deficient and this has been confirmed through the right tests, I now want to show you how to fix that deficiency correctly. Now, the first and most obvious step would be to increase your potassium intake. Most people don't get enough of it because of too much processed food and not enough quality potassium sources in their diet. The best sources are quality fruits and vegetables. And cooking your veggies can also help because the process of cooking makes it easier for your stomach to break down the fiber and access the minerals inside the vegetables. Supplementation is also possible, of course, but you want to discuss this with your doctor first because taking too much potassium at once can have dangerous side effects. That's why in the US, potassium supplements are limited to under 100 milligrams per dose. I explain how to correctly supplement potassium in a different video. Unfortunately, a potassium deficiency isn't just fixed with that. There is more to it. For example, many vegetarians think that they can't possibly be potassium deficient because they eat so many potassium sources. But you not only need to worry about your potassium intake, you also need to look at your potassium retention. And to optimize that, there are two more things we can look at. The first is stress reduction. You see, your sodium and potassium levels are regulated mainly through the adrenal glands and the hormones that they secrete. During periods of stress, your adrenals will secrete cortisol and aldosterone, for example, which spike sodium and indirectly lower potassium. This is done to increase your blood pressure, to get you going, and to get you ready to react to the stress. If this only happens for a while, it's usually not a problem. But if the acute stress turns into chronic stress and goes on for longer than it should, you will be constantly losing potassium. What that means is that a potassium deficiency is very common in people with sympathetic dominance. Sympathetic dominance really just means that these people are overusing their sympathetic nervous system, 
So that part of the nervous system that is responsible for the fight or flight reflex. So anything that reacts to too much stress. They will be constantly be peeing out potassium no matter how much they consume. That's why reducing stress, rebalancing your nervous system, and giving your adrenals time to rest is critical for optimal potassium retention. The second thing we need to look at when we talk about potassium retention are your magnesium levels. What you have to understand is that you don't just want potassium inside of your body, you want it mainly inside of your cell. And to push potassium into the cell and sodium, which is its antagonist, out of the cell, you need magnesium. Magnesium and potassium work together inside the cell, whereas calcium and sodium should be mostly outside the cell. If one is deficient, so either magnesium or potassium, chances are the other is too. Just like a potassium deficiency, a magnesium deficiency is very common nowadays. It might even be the main cause of it even before food processing and chronic stress. This just shows how important it is to regularly monitor your electrolytes, to balance them if they're unbalanced, and to also understand how exactly they work together. I explain all of this in much more detail in a different video. I hope you like this video and I see you in the next one.